I would say we've reached uh, the absolute pinnacle of Super Bowl week on Radio Row on a Friday. You can't e we can't even get into our positions to work. As I mentioned, <laughs> on Monday when we started this whole thing, it was actually Sunday, but Monday you could shoot a cannon through here. Now you can't even walk through the crowd to get to your location to do your job. <laughs> but they have great security here. And we are joined now by another man who's been around a while. He's done a lot of things. And just like I try to do after my radio career, you expand, you get into digital, you do podcasts. He's David Meltzer. He is the CEO of Sports One. Used to work with Lee Steinberg back in the day. That's right. And we go back, 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 back. But now you're doing everything, David. You know what I realize <laughs> is with this whole digital explosion, guys like you and I, we actually can build a brand. And I've learned from actually Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, mm -hmm. that look, if a wine sales guy can do it, the CEO of Lee Steinberg can do it. <laughs> and it's kind of fun. I was standing over there in the crowd, and the guy's just hovering over me. He goes, this is kind of awkward. I said, no, you know, I'm used to radio. It's tight in here. I go, who would you like to meet? I've you know, represented athletes for years. He said, you. He goes, you're my, C my CEO, celebrity CEO hero. I just, I've watched you on the internet. I really want to meet you. It's so weird. Yeah, it used to be, you know, like you never knew who chefs were. They were the guys in the kitchen. Right. Then they go on TV and they become famous and open 100 restaurants. Then you got Shark Tank, where inventors go on. They get rich, but then the hosts who are rich people get rich and they get famous and they can't go anywhere without getting through a crowd, right? Yeah, that's why I went to Entrepreneur and started my own <laughs> Shark Tank with Soul. And I love that idea. It's I love cool. the whole elevator pitch. I mean, you see, it's, it's you know, we, we did it with Entrepreneur, but it blew up. 21 million viewers, number one digital business show, and it really was for mentoring. Like, I, I, I always watch Shark Tank. I'm a big Shark Tank fan. I know, I, I am. And too. I'm like, I just wish they would give them advice. I always felt bad. Yes. Right? They kind of hit them hard. And, and I'm like, you could be abundant in this situation. It's, I think people like it. Yeah. They, and they like to hear the advice from the judges. No, I agree. So, Elevator Pitch, as you mentioned, you got a podcast on iTunes, The Playbook. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You have a foundation where you're helping people in, uh, in Kenya. Yep. So let's first let's talk about elevator pitch though, because as you mentioned, now it's digital. Anybody can have a podcast, but very few people can can reach the audience that they're going after. And business is huge. And now I know people who do like guys play video games online, yeah. and they have like 10 million followers. So it's all about finding that audience that's out there that wants your information and your knowledge and your content. Yeah, it's finding your frequency. And if you look at the guys and women that are successful, they stay with their own frequency. There's 3.2 billion people on the internet. And what I learned was if I create a frequency, mine's more abundant and you know giving back and being of service. But if you find that frequency, you'll attract an audience and it starts with a million people, then to six million, then to 20. And you can monetize that and you'll never have to, like more people know Warren Moon, my business partner, than know Dave Meltzer. But I monetize my brand because of the frequency. Well, Luigi finally got to meet Mar Warren Moon I'm in close. Houston last year. I'm close with Warren Moon. <laughs> Warren Moon and I have a special bond. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I actually dr I drunk dialed Warren Moon one night. <laughs> I, and I got a chance to tell him the story in Houston. We were at a bar. I had Warren Moon's phone number. My buddies always make this. We had this big thing where, you know, let's call Luigi's mom in the middle of the night. So instead of dialing mom, I dialed Moon. Oh, no. So I, yeah. dial, I dialed Warren Moon, and I said, I said, Mom. He goes, this is Warren Moon. I go, how are you doing at my mom's house? <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> but it was the greatest. And, he, and, he, and when I finally got a chance to meet him at the, uh, you know, in Houston, I said to him, I, I said, I told him the story, and he goes, I remember this kid. I remember him. <laughs> that is awesome. Right. Thank goodness he's on the West Coast, so he didn't wake him up, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah no, and, and, and Warren's great. I've known him forever. We we go he's way, way back. He's a big fan of yours. <laughs> great guy. And. Uh, He's not doing a party here. Is he going to be at the Thuzio party tonight? You know, he's not. They're going to honor him. He, he's one of, they're honoring the men of the year, and he's right. one of the first NFL men of the year. So he has so many different things going on. He's so philanthropic these days. Uh, it's not easy being a philanthropist. <laughs> no, you're right. You know, it can be a full-time job. Yeah, and he really, so many people want him. He's a quarterback here. Uh, so he, he's on, on the road raising money for other people. So he mentioned uh, elevator pitch. Then you've got one of the top five business uh, podcasts, The Playbook. And what do you do with that? You know, because, like you, we've met so many extraordinary people along the way. I wanted people to know what their playbook to success was. You know, we could talk about the on-the-field stuff and the in, the in the boardroom stuff, but I want to know what makes, like, how you got here. The thing that aggravates me most are two sentences about athletes and CEOs and, and, and guys like you. Oh, you're an overnight success, right? Uh -huh. You're so lucky. 
Yeah. And luck, <laughs> I've lost more money, you know, to get to where I'm at than most people ever made. I'm the biggest moron you'll ever meet. And I want people to know the dummy tax that I paid. I want young guys like these to not make the same stupid mistakes so that, you know, they could be 40 years old and be really successful as an overnight success. Exactly. Because, you know, well, luckily, I've been in the business so long, and especially here on Radio Row, where a lot of the guys who are doing radio now grew up listening to me on ESPN and Fox or the Madden games. So that's what I get all the time. Oh, my God, you're the guy from the Madden game. Or, or guys in the radio business listen to me on ESPN when they were in college in 1992. So, you know, they know you, you develop a background. Yeah. And, again, it's not an overnight story because I've been in radio 45 years, and people say, I want to be like you. I said, well, work hard, do something good. Be around the right people. Look up to those who are better than you, which is what I did, and then learn from them. Always, I'm still trying to learn from great people every single day, and that's the key. Don't think you know it all. Just keep absorbing facts, knowledge, information, and expertise from other people, and it wears off. You got it. And it's funny you say John Madden. Imagine what he feels like. Right? Most of these kids, like my seven-year-old son, have no clue. He had to ask me, so who's this Madden guy that they need? He thought it was like a brand, like Mattel. Yeah. Right? Madden was like Mattel. Yeah. And I said, right. no, he won a Super Bowl. He was an actual he person. Player. I go, even though he makes more money for putting he's not even in the game anymore. I know. No. He hasn't been in the game in forever. It's still the number one sales day at Walmart overall is when they release Madden. It's unbelievable. It really is. Ladies and gentlemen, Busta Rhymes is in the house. Busta oh, Rhymes yeah. in the yeah. house. Everybody's here. He has here. a bigger posse than I have. Oh, Imagine yeah. That. yeah. Now, you only have, like, three guys. Yeah. I guess I roll with Robin and Luigi to pretend that I'm important. No, I don't. I just want to get in here and have them hold a camera to you. Uh, That's the secret. Look at this. People are like, who the hell is that? Oh, my gosh. And the funniest thing is you go to these parties. I went to the EA party. Yeah. And all these guys roll in, and there's, like, 50 people. I'm like, who the hell are these guys, you know? And I'm not saying they're not somebody, but it's like. Everybody's not recognizable, you know. Right. But you know, you know when the Dak Prescotts come in, and you know when the big stars come in. Yeah. But then you see guys rolling in. You're saying, "Who the hell?" I'm, I'm sure they're saying the same thing about exactly. me. Exactly. And me, they're sitting there going, "Who are these two guys?" <laughs> Although I, I sometimes gain weight on purpose before a Super Bowl, so people think I'm John Lovitz. <laughs> I'm my autograph. It's oh, it's oh awesome. you've gotten the John Lovitz oh, yeah, you sign? It. Yeah, it's so well, sad. Well, before isn't it? before Tony uh, let his beard go white and he had it darker, everybody thought that he was Brian Cranston. Yes, the Walter oh, yeah. White. I would I get that. that. Yeah. The Walter White thing. Yeah, and I sign as Walter White now, but <laughs> I don't. I don't make my own uh, meth in, in my uh, apartment in, yeah, in, yeah. in South Philadelphia. Well, I did try it in, in Venice when I lived. No, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. that, was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, 2000, 2000 to 2011 when I was in. L no, I never did any. I hate that stuff. All right, so now the uh, the Thuzio part. So Thuzio is a big organization, and they're having their party tonight, and you're involved with Thuzio as well, right? Yeah, so I do a lot of speaking for them. They have a membership where they'll bring in coaches and celebrities to speak to around, around the country, like 150 events. Tiki Barber is an investor in them, and so they've asked us to provide content for the party and sponsorship, et cetera. So we have some really great brands involved, and then they got Drew Rosenhaus to bring his players. And Drew Rosenhaus, you know, Lee and Drew, when you talk oh. about... <laughs> the biggest agents out there, the two yeah. probably the two most known. I mean, there's a lot and of opposites, agents now. Polar opposite guys. Yeah, exactly. But you know, there's a million agents now. You know, and and Lee always used to get the quarterbacks, the Aikmans and the Montana, yep. not the not Young, Montana, Steve Aikman, Young, Moon. Warren Moon. Yeah. You know, so now there's like a million agents out there, all going after the same big guys. It's crazy, and, but they all came from Lee's, right? The Duns of the world, yep. the Tolners. They all worked with us. Russ Spielman's here. I saw him walking around mm -hmm. as well, which is really fun for me because I'm a huge Lee Steinberg fan. I know. The, the man, you know, obviously human, fallible, had his, his disease. and his, The best day for me is when he went public with his disease. Because yes. yes. hard for Warren and I, we spun off our company. We were both partners with Lee. And the hardest time was we didn't want to hurt his brand. So people thought we deserted Lee. They didn't know what was going on. So when he went public, it, so many phone calls were like, I owe you apologize, uh, an apology because we felt that you and Warren abandoned Lee. And now we understand why. We saved Lee's life. And, yeah. And I'm glad that we did what we well, did. Well, and I think that Lee going public also, it, it means to pe so much to people because when, quote unquote, regular people are going through hard times and then they see somebody like that going through the same thing that they're going through, not only does it humanize it, but it goes, okay, now if he can get over it, I can too. Absolutely, and it is a disease, and there's a lot of people inflicted with it. And I, I really, I'm so proud of Lee. I think he has eight guys walking around here. Mahomes, yeah. like, what yeah. a great thing. I He's know, the talk Pat of the show. I gotta tell you, yeah. I gotta I, tell you. We had him on the other day, and I asked the first question. I said, Lee, 
congratulations, you're a father again. You just <laughs> inherited a starting quarterback. Exactly. He said, no, make it a grandfather, because now that Alex Smith is gone, yeah. it looks like Pat is going to be Pat Mahomes' team. And it's Pat amazing. looks so different from last, like last year when he was at Super Bowl. He was just this sort of little... Very polite, demure. But he put on clean, weight. I mean, he's, put, yeah. he's bulked up. Well, he, he, he and can he's, drink now, right? So he's 21. Yeah. Well, not he even that way. I mean, good way. Up. He's, he's, good way. he's bigger, stronger. And that was, the, you know, oh, he's not big enough. He's not bulky enough. He's still enough. going through puberty. This kid is young. Well, he's definitely not shy. I think he's going to grow two more inches. Yeah. He was what a shy. Great like, I know. He was, yeah. he, last year, he was very shy. And grounded. And uh, we talked to Lee the other day. And the whole thing about Pat Mahomes, he's the total package. He's not just a guy with a big arm who's got issues. He's a guy who grew up in a sports family. His grandfather, his father. So he's been in locker rooms. He sees the environment. And so he, he understands that's what he's getting himself into. And it's not going to be too big for him once he goes out there. Right, and that's why they traded up for him, right? Everyone was so surprised. Yep. And I said, nope, that's Lee. Yep. He knows exactly what he's selling. He knew the exact guy he wanted to go after and why. And he's a Lee Steinberg type of guy, like a Warren Moon, a Steve Young. You'll see. He's a legacy person that gives back to his community mm -hmm. and really is a team leader beyond just being a great talent. Because we've had great Jeff George, great talent. Ryan Leaf, unbelievable talent. But were they truly the legacy Lee Steinberg type now, of guys? I actually have a question regarding for, as, for, from an agent's responsibility. There are a lot of players out there that don't have guidance that – get in trouble that um, and, I, and I sometimes feel like they, they, they start so young and they s maybe don't have great father figures in their lives or a great family situation or maybe they've just been allowed to get away with whatever they've been getting away with in high school um, because of being such great players do you feel that an agent has a responsibility to be that kind of father figure as well as guiding them in Business? Absolutely. I, and that's where I learned the game of agentry was from Lee. And we had one simple qualifier. We required every one of our athletes to give back to the community, to create a foundation about something that they were passionate about. And by doing so, if they weren't willing to do that, we knew they didn't have the values or at least the hope of having values that would be aligned no matter how great of the athletes they were. Right, we fired Plexigo Burris because he literally wasn't part of our value system. So I, I personally believe that that's what makes the job great is to inspire because these guys are going to inspire. So you, I believe I changed the world because I had guys like Steve Young, Warren Moon that I taught certain things. I guided them and helped them, but it empowered me and then them to empower millions of people because they're out there, you know, giving back to the community and inspiring people. It's really awesome. David Meltzer, what an unbelievable story. And just like Lee, you know, you have your success, but then you give back and you go out there. And Lee does his party where he doesn't sell tickets to the public. He's not bringing out. He brings athletes in, but to either honor them or, 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 or network, or, or network <laughs> and, and actually get these sponsors to help other people. And that's what people like you and Lee Steinberger, who have been successful, give back by being a philanthropist, not just a guy who's signing sports athletes to make more money. Yeah, and if you could indulge me, it's, it was my 50th birthday, January 11th, and I created a 50 for, so instead of buying another Ferrari or Porsche, <laughs> I am building an empowerment leadership center, raising over a million dollars. I'm having 50 birthday parties around the world where don't bring me gifts, please donate. I actually have a text awesome. 50 for 50 to 555-888. And because of social media, it's so much fun. I get these great messages of people I've never met before. And, you know, they get $5 or $10, yeah. but it's amazing. Those add up. So I really appreciate all those the people that support us. And just a thought. If you want to donate a Ferrari to me or whatever, that's fine. There you, you know, go. Just a thought. <laughs> throw it out there. I got an whatever. extra one. Nope, I appreciate it. You can it. afford like, the upkeep. You can have it. Extra one lying around. <laughs> so the number well, again that's is. That's a great idea. I turned 50 this house. year as well. So. You don't look it. I look it. <laughs> I, I don't look 80. I look, I look good for 80. Yeah, you, you do. do look good for 80. So you donate today by texting 50 for 50 to 555-888. And the education centers in Kenya yeah. where all this money is going yeah, to we, help those Unstoppable people. Foundation, we've already impacted 75,000 people. Warren and I actually built a village two years ago, water, education, and what happened is mostly women, they're, by ninth grade, they're married and right. uh, worse things. What we've done now, they're graduating college. Well, now I want an empowerment and leadership center so those women and men that are empowered by us can empower the kids that's themselves fantastic. and scale. So that's what we're doing. Great stuff, David. It's, it's great to see you again, man. I, you're blowing up all over the place. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm just hanging in.
You're blow. You're blowing. Well, you got. I got 15 years on you, though. So you can, I got to catch up to you, but I really appreciate all of you. And you can butt down me anytime. <laughs> I, I will. I actually will. It's exactly. funny because I actually told him like, okay, you cannot just put Warren's name under Moon. You need to put it something else yeah. so yeah, that you not don't next have to mom. Yeah. And cool. again, just a thought. It's a lot easier for me to butt down a lot more comfortable out of the you know the seat of a Ferrari. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. throwing it out there. For I you. went to text Terrell Davis when he got in the Hall of Fame. You know, we work with the Hall of Fame, right. and I accidentally called him like two minutes after the announced it. He's probably like, why is Dave Meltzer calling me? Moron. <laughs> Dave, it's great to see you. Thanks so much. You keep doing a great job, man. Bless you all. Let's Thank give you. Him a roaring round of applause, Tony. Let's you give him a roaring round of applause. <laughs> with our simulated studio audience. There's a lot of people here, though, but they're, they don't, they're not paying attention.